the Krau Wildlife Reserve in Malaysia. Almost 70 different bat species live here in an area of about 600 square kilometers. How can so many bats coexist in such a narrow range? Must they compete for food? In the course of evolution, every species has specialized on specific food. Some bats feed on fruit or flower pollen. Others only feed on insects. The insect eaters even have developed further specializations. Some of them hunt in open spaces. Others have their foraging grounds inside dense forest vegetation. For this purpose, many use their seventh sense, echolocation. In open space, finding prey with echolocation is easy. The bat emits a call. The reflecting echo very likely originates from possible prey. However, the task is much more complex for bats that forage within vegetation. Here, echoes from leaves, branches, and tree trunks mask the echo of the prey. How does a bat differentiate the weak signal of the prey out of all the other echoes? For bats, it's important that prey is a certain distance from the background. In case the insect is located at a relatively large distance from the leaves, here about 27 centimeters, the echo of the prey is clearly separated from the background echo. In this case, the prey is clearly detectable by the bat. When the distance is reduced to 3 centimeters, the echoes overlap and the prey becomes sort of invisible. But there are species who can. At night in the Malaysian rainforest, a team of researchers around Daniela Schmida and Tiga Kingston are in search of Asian bat species, the Asian woolly bats and the tube-nosed bats. These species can distinguish prey from background in spite of very small distances. The structure of their echolocation calls is perfectly adapted to hunt close to vegetation. The team has set up harp traps, which are the best suited to capture these bats. Sometimes there are only one or two bats caught in the trap, but some nights more than ten. The team brings the captured animals to a central area for further examination. They identify the species, weigh the animal, and record whether it is an adult or a juvenile. Finally, the animals are ringed and released. However, not all animals are released. Daniela Schmida takes some of them to a field station at the edge of the Krau Reserve. The scientist aims to investigate their echolocation skills. Daniela has set up a flight tent and presents the prey, here a mealworm, at different distances in front of a background that simulates vegetation. She films the prey detection abilities with surveillance cameras and analyzes the recordings. Daniela Schmida found that the investigated species were still able to find the mealworm at very short distances from the background, usually distances of six centimeters, but some even caught the prey at a distance of only one centimeter. The species that are well adapted to the conditions of the rainforest produce extremely short broadband calls that permit a very high resolution of three-dimensional structures. Moreover, the calls have a very short duration. A call of less than two milliseconds guarantees that the echo is not overlapping the call itself, and that the background echo is not masking the echo of the prey. The study shows that the eight tested Malaysian bat species are true specialists in detecting insects within the vegetation. Whether bats with this ability will have access to new food resources will be a subject for further investigation. <laughs>